Hello friends, in this video we will be continuing our last lecture in which we were discussing subspaces. Right? In the last lecture we have seen that M2R is a vector space over R under this operation. Correct? We have proved that it is satisfying all those 10 conditions. Then after proving that M2R is a vector space we have seen this U2R is a vector subspace of M2R. U2R is nothing but set of all upper triangular matrices. And also, in the last lecture only, we see that D2R, that means set of all diagonal matrices, is forming a subspace of U2R, or you can say it is a subspace of M2R also. In today's class, we will be continuing the sim same example by considering new subspaces. Okay, Let us see one of the example, uh, that is S2R. So S2R is nothing but set of all symmetric matrices which are 2 cross 2 and the entries are real numbers. Correct? That means if I want to define this set, then the set can be defined by a 2 cross 2 matrix A, B, B, C, where this A, B, C are real numbers. So this is a subset of M2R, definitely yes since every element of this is a 2 cross 2 matrix over R. So the given set is a subset of M2R. Is it a non-empty set? Yes, it is non-empty. Since we know that, always I give this trivial example 0, 0, 0 is an element of S2R. It is satisfying that condition if you see. Correct? So we know that this is a non-empty subset of M2R. Any non empty subset is said to be a subspace if it satisfies that condition. Condition is alpha w1 bar plus w2 bar must be element of that set where alpha is any real number. w1 and w2 are the element of that set. Okay, so for any alpha, if I take a real number, any two symmetric matrix A, B, B, C. Uh, other I consider P, Q, Q, R inside S2R and if I make their combination that is alpha A, B, B, C plus P, Q, Q, R my answer will be what after applying the operation in this manner we know that the answer will be alpha A plus P alpha B plus Q alpha B plus Q alpha c plus r and the resultant matrix is again a symmetric matrix correct resultant matrix is again a symmetric matrix hence we can conclude that this s2r is the subspace of m2r correct so we got one more example of subspace now uh, we will see one more similar after symmetric the related term is q symmetric right so let us define the skew symmetric matrices and that will be an exercise for you that it is a subspace or not. Okay. So let us just define what is a skew symmetric matrix and how the set will look like. We use the notation SK2R. This represent set of all 2 cross 2 skew symmetric matrix. Skew symmetric matrix has a property that if you flip it you get the negative means you know that a i j is same as minus of a j i so according to that condition diagonals must be zero if i keep b over here over here it will be minus b so it is a matrix of this kind where b is any real number so we know that this is a set of all skew symmetric matrix it is non-empty since all zero that is zero matrix is an element of it after that, if you see, if you consider alpha time one skew symmetric matrix plus another skew symmetric matrix, the answer will be again a skew symmetric matrix. Hence, you can conclude skew symmetric matrix is also a subspace of M2R. Okay. Over here, after this, I think according to your portion, all the related example has got over in M2R only. Others are definitely there, but we will be discussing about M2R. 
so after this i want to conclude two of the lectures together the things that we have learned and a beautiful note about subspaces and is always important so what we have learned is we know that suppose this is my m2r my biggest space then in the fifth lecture we learn there is one subspace which is known as u2r set of our upper triangular matrices inside this we can find out some d2r right d2r is completely contained inside u2r and today in this class we learn two other subspaces what are those those are s2r and sa2r symmetric and skew symmetric matrix okay. are diagonal matrix element of either of them you will observe all the diagonal matrix are symmetric matrix hence i know this diagonal matrix is contained inside s to r also so you can observe that u to r and s k r as a common part which is d to r they might have some other element also but according to our lectures we can see this after that we have learned skew symmetric matrix that is also a subspace of it inside the bigger vector space we have found smaller vector space which will be known as a subspace of that okay so now from this diagram i can say my d2r is subset of s2 subspace of s2r also also in this diagram i purposely make all of them intersect at somewhere it might be possible their intersection might be empty over here but they must have at least one point in common all the subspaces that element is nothing but the zero element so this is a simple note for you guys whenever you are talking about a subspaces one thing that you should make sure zero element must be element of otherwise it cannot be a subspace and the next example of a subspace we will discuss this in detail about the zero element but for now you should remember any subspace must have a zero element so if i give you any vector space and i talk about any subspace of it then every subspace of them has a non empty intersection because we know that all of them contain a one common point that is a zero element okay so i think this is enough for the class in the next class we will be continuing the discussion about subspaces so okay thank you so much for watching this video share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel